Hey everyone, Kelsey here and welcome back to Gal. Today I'm going to be showing you six different before and after effects that you can apply to your footage to create a beautiful transformation. So if you're an interior designer or let's say a makeup artist or anybody that requires some sort of transformational reveal, these effects will make your video look more dynamic. So I'm going to break down each effect inside of Premiere Pro, but before we jump in, I want to thank today's sponsor, Motion Can. So Motion Can is the creator of my favorite graphics pack for Premiere Pro. It's just called Graphics Pack and you can purchase it from Envato Market. You might also know it as Video Hive. And the reason why I love it is that all of the motion graphics inside of the pack are nicely organized inside of a panel. So you can just browse the different categories from kinetic titles, transitions to different glitch elements, and you can just click apply and it will apply to the timeline. And sound effects are included as well. And the best part part is, is that all of the graphics are responsive to whatever resolution that you're working in and any duration time changes that you make. So if you want to purchase the graphics pack, you can use my affiliate link below and it helps support the channel. And you can buy a version for After Effects and Premiere or Final Cut Pro. Without further ado, the time codes are below and let's go ahead and jump into Premiere. So for this demo, I'm using footage from ArtGrid and the reason why I love ArtGrid is that you can download the raw original file. So raw or log, which is kind of a milky texture so you can color grade it how you want. So for this, I'm doing before and after the color grade. So on video layer one, it's the clip, the exact same clip, but in the log format. And then on top, is the graded version. If you're interested in learning how to grade log footage, you can click up here to watch my full tutorial. So it's important that they're stacked on top of each other here because you want them to play at the exact same time because these are the same clips. So if you have a photo, for example, you'll wanna make sure that the framing is in the exact same framing. So put the tripod in the same place, press record or take a photo. And then after the transformation, put it in the exact same place and take a photo and have the same framing. So that way these effects will look a lot better. So there's a little bit you have to do in production before you go into post. All right, so the wipe. Go up to effects, search for wipe, and down here underneath the wipe category, you'll find this wipe transition. We're going to drag and drop it onto the clip here. And now we'll have this basic wipe. And you'll notice that it's already started here in the beginning. What we need to do is actually roll this in just slightly so that way you get the full effect. And to make it longer, you can click on the end of the transition and roll it out to make it a little bit slower of a wipe. So I think that this works just fine, but it's kind of hard to see this line. So to make it more obvious, I like to go into effect controls, make sure that you have the transition selected. And I like to add a border width. For this, I'm gonna choose 15 and change the color to white. So now we have our nice wipe reveal and it's easy to see the wipe with this white border. But what if you want it to loop? So for example, if you wanna export this as a video or as a GIF that you can embed on your website to show a before and after loop. So what you can do is you can take this wipe transition, copy it by pressing a command C or control C on a PC and then pasting it, command V or control V. And then we're just gonna roll in the end a little bit. So there's a little bit of the before clip at the end. And now we need to reverse it by clicking on this reverse. So if you are a fan of Missy Elliott, put your thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your flipping up a plan. <laughs> but it is a little slow. So I'm going to actually just shorten these clips a little bit here because it's a little slow. And I want the wipes to almost meet by extending them out so it's almost like an immediate wipe back and forth. And then here, I'm going to press O as an out point, and I'm going to make sure that the loop playback button is on. So make sure it's blue. So this is what the loop looks like. There we go. So what you can do is you can just export this as an MP4 movie file. And I actually use an app called Gifsky that's completely free and you can just drag that file and it creates a really fast GIF. You can also export a GIF in Premiere Pro, but it takes a little bit more work to try to find the right settings. So it's not a huge file. So I recommend using Gifsky instead. If you wanna add before and after text, as the wipe is happening, this is what you can do. You can select the text 
type tool here. And here, let's just type out before. And then I can duplicate this graphic. So let's roll it to meet uh, the exact length of the before clip below. We can move the wipe on top and move before below that. And then we can duplicate the before text by pressing Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and drag this up. And we can then call this after. And we can then use these position alignment controls to move this over to the after side. Now, with the after clip, we need to roll this in to meet the duration of the video clip too, and then copy these wipes. So Command C or Control C, and then Control V, and then copy this one and paste it. And now when we play it back, you can see the after text is also revealed and the before as well. So it actually works really nicely. So that's how you can add text to it. So that's the first way. And then the second one is also a built-in effect. It's the barn door transition. And a lot of people think the barn door transition is, is quite cheesy. It's not used very often, but it actually works well when you're trying to reveal a before and after effect. So the same thing, we're gonna go to effects and search for barn doors and drag and drop this onto the after clip here. Then we can extend the duration and give it a little bit of space in the beginning. And here's the barn door effect. I would also recommend adding a border. So if you go up to effect controls, we can add 15, 15 border width and create a white uh, border color. And this is how it looks. So it works, it works pretty nicely. And if you wanna add text here, you would follow the exact same steps that I showed you when adding text to the basic wipe. The next one is my favorite. It's the gradient wipe transition. And this one works a little bit differently. So we're gonna go up to effects and search for gradient wipe. Now we're not gonna choose this wipe, but this one instead. So select this and drag it onto the clip, not at the beginning of the clip. And now we're gonna roll the playhead to the beginning, go up to effect controls, and from transition completeness, we want this to start at 100%. And then we can select the toggle animation to create a keyframe. So this means that the transition's complete and we see the before underneath. And now we can just go forward to when we want the transition to end and bring this down to zero. Now, when we play this back, it kind of looks like a luma fade, but it looks kind of choppy around the edges. So I'm gonna smoothen that out by changing this to around 70. And it just makes it more smooth. So you can play around with the slider until you can see when it starts to not be smooth anymore. See how rough it is? So you can play around with the smoothness level and we can also right click on the end keyframe and ease in so it's more smooth. And now we can play it back and it's just this beautiful, you know, coming to life of the image. And I really think that this is unique and it's completely built in. A lot of people don't know about this effect and I think it's great. So if you want it to be longer, we can roll it out so it's longer and we can press enter to render it out if you need to. But I have my playback at a quarter resolution. This is 4K footage and it plays pretty well without rendering it. A beautiful gradient wipe. So that's number three. Now let's go on to number four, the split screen. So the split screen works exactly the same, but instead what we're going to be doing is cutting it in half. So we need to know the halfway point. So to do that, it's easier to have the rulers visible. If you don't see the rulers visible, make sure that your program window is selected, go up to view and show rulers. And then you can click on the left ruler here and drag out a guide and you can put it at the exact halfway pixel point. So this particular footage is 4,096 pixels. It's 4K footage. And the halfway is 2048. So I can right click here on this, go back to the selection tool. I can right click on this guide and hit edit guide. And now I can type in exactly 2048 because I know that that's the halfway point. And now this top clip, the after clip, we can move this over using the effect controls so it fits exactly inside of this halfway. And then we need to apply a crop. So we can go up to effects and go to crop and apply the crop 
bam, bada, bam, and then go to effect controls. And using the left crop, we're going to roll the left to meet that halfway point, just like that. It's a little sensitive. There we go. That looks good. And then the bottom one is just easy. Select it and move the position over until it looks almost identical on the left. So now we have the before on the left and the after on the right. Now we can just remove this center point, drag it over to the left and it's gone. And if you want to add a rectangular line here, we can actually go down here to the toolbar and choose rectangle tool. And then we can click and create a thin rectangular line just like that. I think that looks good. Make sure it is exactly in the right position by using the align tools. That looks good. And now we have our before and after and move this graphic line over so it aligns with the footage below. So that's what it looks like. And if you want to add some cool animated before and after text, this is where we can actually use the Motion Bro panel here. And as I mentioned from the beginning, there's so many different cool elements here, shape elements, titles, there's devices, logo reveals. There's so much here inside of the Motion Can graphics pack, but I'm going to use the titles here. And then you can scroll down and preview all of the titles to choose which one you want to use for your before and after text. So that way you don't have to create any animation. You can just choose what's available here. This one is good. So I'm going to apply this. And it will apply it at the playhead. So if we want it in the beginning, we can just drag it over. And we can also just roll this in and it will respond. The animation will end at the clip now. So it's responsive design. So here we can use effect controls. All this is is a Mogart file. So we can use this here to just change this to before, for example, and change the line width. And we'll also want to change the font, I think, to Montserrat Light or let's say Italic. Let's try italic and adjust the width and then the scale you can drop this down and then we can duplicate this by hitting the alt key or the option key on a mac and let's change this to after and then move this position over like that so we have after and we have this nice before and after split screen if you want the template version of this where you can just drag and drop your media and you don't have to add the crop effect or use the rulers, I've made this double split screen available for free to my patrons, which I've linked to down below. So now there's two more transitions that I wanna show you that do require plugins. So this one is by Film Impact. Film Impact has great transitions and you can actually get 30 days free using my link below. But if you decide to purchase, you can use my code PremierGal10 to get 10% off. So they have some great, a wipe transition. So I'm just going to search wipe and you will see that there's a few uh, film impact transformers. So the first one I want to show you is the stretch wipe. So you can drag and drop this on the clip. And what's great about it is they function just like built-in transitions. You just drag and drop them, which is rare to find in the plugin community. So I'm just going to drag this over a little bit. If the playback is slow, you can always render it out, but this is what it looks like. And what's really cool about the film impact transitions is that there's a lot more customization. So here we can change the angle. If we want it to be at 45 degrees, it'll go from the top right corner down, which is really cool. And you can play around with the exposure level of the actual stretch. So if you want it to be brighter, you can brighten that up if you need to. Or better yet, you can choose surprise me and it will create a completely random a wipe transition and some of them look pretty cool. This one's a little strange, but let's try surprise me again and let's see how that looks. All right, sometimes the surprise me works. Sometimes I just end up going back to the original. There's one more that's really cool. It is called the plateau wipe. So I'm gonna drag and drop that here. And the plateau is almost like it's animating in and kind of scaling the image in like a magical wipe. So that's another option. And there's a few others that you can play around with. There's a ton of transitions in Film Impact. And the last one I wanna show you is the Tap Cursor Seamless Transition. This is where I'm going to use a plugin from AE Juice, their Pack Seamless Transition. So if I go up to AE Juice Pack Manager, it'll load up this panel here. 
and you can see that I have seamless transitions loaded up and there's a bunch of different categories you can play with. This particular one has a mouse cursor and it's like it's pulling it down and I think it's really cool. So what we can do is decide where we want the transition to take place. Let's say here and let's roll this clip in and then back to AE Juice. And then here, let's say we wanna use this one. We can just double click to apply it and it will import the files exactly at our playhead here. And that's what it looks like. You can see the little mouse here. It's like it's pushing it up. And yeah, it's just a more dynamic way of having a transition between two shots and it comes with a sound effect. So those are the six different ways that you can create dynamic before and afters in your videos. If this video helped you out and showed you an effect that you've never seen before, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe as well as hit that notification bell. I wanna give a huge thanks to Motion Can for sponsoring today's video. Definitely take advantage of their graphics pack. It's a great deal. You buy it once and you can use all of their titles in your YouTube videos and your social videos. It just saves you a lot of time. And my affiliate link is just down below. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye.